Elizabeth Olsen's leading role in Love and Death will undoubtedly be the topic of much discussion, and the episode Stepping Stone, which continues her journey from devil-may-care cheating housewife to woman scorned, will only add fuel to the fire. Olsen is outstanding in this. She crosses the transom from vaguely insane to downright terrifying in just a few opening scenes when she confronts Alan about his daughter Alice is saying Candy cares too much about what other people think, which Candy assumes she is repeating after hearing from someone else. It's important to note, however, that this performance wouldn't be as effective without Jesse Plemons, who plays a character who is torn between his obligations and his libido. Plemons portrays a weak-willed man who genuinely loves his wife but feels stifled by her, but who is also too gullible and spineless to realize that his current situation is dangerous not only to his marriage but also, it seems, to his physical well-being. It's important to keep in mind that it has been clearly hinted that Candy cares more about what having an affair with Alan means to her than Alan himself. She feels especially betrayed because his loyalty puts a stop to her adultery, which she had come to identify herself by and not because she is envious of his marriage to Betty. Texas in the late 1970s was home to a firmly Christian neighborhood. Second only to God, marriage and family are everything. Candy disregarded societal conventions in her liaisons with Alan. She was unbound. She is once again imprisoned in the sexless cage of nuclear family conservatism as a result of Alan's rejection of her, and she admits to Sherry that it is the rejection in particular that she is finding difficult to deal with. One speculates that this is the cause of her sudden and full unraveling. The emphasis on time passing and love and death isn't very strong. Therefore the response appears overly harsh. It helps to think of Candy's abrupt slide as a terrifying existential fear. But blimey, does she make it clear. Candy is adamant about stopping by when Alan informs her that Betty discovered a breast lump that two physicians have confirmed is benign. For the time it takes Alan to pull into the driveway, she is able to portray worry and attention. Betty glances out the window at the two of them conversing and realizes there is something going on between them right away since her eye rolling and discomfort become so clear as soon as he arrives. I know I seem like I'm rambling and reading too much into this, but a moment where Candy invites Pat to go to marriage and counter validates what I'm saying. She directly asks him throughout the chat why he believes he is here, as in on Earth, and he responds with a completely acceptable response, stating that he is here to act like a tree and establish roots, develop fruit, and spread seeds. He asks Candy the same question, but she is unable to respond. She is unsure. Later, when Pastor Ron is whining about how none of his parishioners like him, Don says something like to him. According to him, all people desire is to raise their children, to love their families, and to love God. What if they don't, though? Candy, who foolishly believes that if she can heal her marriage, she can get over the rejection, tries to cover her existential turmoil by following Alan and Betty's journey through marriage encounter. Pat, however, calls the retreat a cult, indicating that Candy and Pat do not share Alan and Betty's belief in it. It kind of works, in its own peculiar way, but it's only a bandage over a wound that has to be stitched before it festers. Candy claims to feel shame, but is this true? I believe she could. Olsen does a wonderful job of selling it in any case. Everyone returns to their tense domesticity following these discoveries. Candy and Pat make an effort to act normally. Betty's disagreements with Pastor Ron keep Alan and Betty away from the church. They live in Wiley, not Collin County, and they seem rather disconnected. But because Alice is usually at her house and friends with Candy's kid, Candy finds up visiting Betty at home while running errands for Alyssa. Since Alan went on a business trip, Betty is once again stressed out. She was told to cease using birth control after discovering the benign mess, and now she fears she could be pregnant once more. When Candy enters the Gore home, which she recognizes from the premiere's cold open, there is an immediate feeling of dread. On the sofa is the yellow wash basket. The rocking horse and playmate are on the ground, so it comes as no surprise when Betty confronts Candy about the relationship. The episode comes to a close with Candy admitting, Betty running outdoors, and her hanging wood splitting axe that will murder her. Yet we miss the murder, on the understanding that it will arrive, that is where we leave things. It will be fascinating to see how much more of this tale there is to be told with only 5 episodes left. Thanks for watching, and if you're new to channel subscribe and click the bell, so you don't miss out latest videos of Media Breakdown.